I used to go out to the Hakkawa Games with my father, sit on the terraces of Wentworth Park and ES Marksfield and what have you, and developed an absolute passion and love for football. My first year of university, a guy, Howard Simons, came up to me and said, hey, listen, um, at Maccabi, we're actually short of a goalkeeper this weekend. Um, any chance you can play in goals? An unbelievable goalkeeper. Uh, fearless, crazy, stupid, all of those things a goalkeeper has to be. He was my goalkeeper, played behind me for many years. A lot of incredible moments. I mean, to get to the Maccabea, there was actually a carnival in Brisbane, which happened to be the very first time football was ever played at a carnival, 1976, 77. And then they'd need fill-ins for other sports, and I got to play in table tennis. I think I might have even played one game of basketball. And that was my introduction to Maccabi. It's the sort of organisation that grows on you, and you know that you're doing, you know, you've got a lot in common with a lot of the other people that are playing with you. Carnivals were a blast, an absolutely fantastic time, um, where I snuck into the team as the reserve goalkeeper, but finished up playing every game um, in 1977 Maccabea. And from there it just continued to blossom and it's meant that, hey listen, I'm very, very happy to give back to the organisation. I suppose my roles in the initial stages within the football club, where I'd act whatever they wanted me to do. If I, you know, want, if they wanted a gear master to be the schlepper with the gear, if they wanted a publicity officer, uh, I was acting as publicity officer. Then in um, 1997, with Louis Platus being the manager of the um, team to go to Israel, he asked me to be the treasurer for that team. 1997 finished up being quite a disastrous occurrence. And it stands out in everyone's memories, in, in those memories of, of anyone who was there at the time. And the aftermath, to me, was particularly disappointing. Um, there were victims, severe victims, of that disaster. And it became fairly evident that not enough was being done to help them and to assist them. When he believes in something, he fights for it 100%. He really became involved and tried to help in whatever capacity he could for all the families. Uh, I'll put my hand up and lo and behold, next thing I knew I was elected Vice President of Maccabi Australia. He took over Maccabi uh, Australia at a terrible time. He fought through it. It really was a position where I felt that I could contribute and help those who needed help very, very much. And he really rose to the occasion. OK, uh, that was my role at Maccabi Australia to assist, to the best of my, my ability, those people. You know, we often had meetings that, at his place. He was always willing to give his place as a meeting place. It, it was a turbulent time. It was a very, very difficult time. Time was never an issue for him. He gave freely of his time. He was the one who pulled the organisation back into um, to what it was. I mean, he is decency personified. He's a really great guy. I then went on to sit on committees at Maccabi World Union, basically the Safety and Security Committee, to ensure that, uh, that safety and security matters were taken properly uh, for future Maccabi art. Serving the Jewish community through Maccabi, Phil Filler then turned his attention to Maccabi's counterpart in Jewish sport, the Hakoa Club, a facility that was central to Maccabi's existence in the 80s, 90s and 2000s. Hakoa's support of Maccabi goes back more than 30 years and the two organisations have worked side by side. What a pleasure it is for me to, to see him growing up from a young goalkeeper to a president of Hakoa and Maccabi as well. After a few years, it became really, really obvious that Hakoa was a fantastic entity for its time. But by the end of the 1990s, and certainly the, you know, by the year 2000, it had become fairly obvious that, hey, listen, this is not the product um, for the next generation of our community. Time is up. The major asset at Hakoa was its property. It was a very, very valuable property. Um, but we were bleeding, and if we continue to trade um, in deficit, we would have eroded the value of the club. But ultimately led to the preservation of the capital of the club and also led to the preservation of the opportunity to resurrect the club at White City. I have every confidence that Hakawa White City will be there for the community, for the entire community, of which Maccabi is obviously a very, very integral part. 
In 2017, Hakoa is still one of Maccabi's primary supporters by allowing Maccabi to use its facilities at White City. You know, Maccabi serves a brilliant role, particularly amongst its own community. It gives opportunity to children to find their identity. Having played for Maccabi, having gone to Israel, having met fellow Jews from within Sydney, from within other states of Australia at carnivals, from other countries at, Mac at Maccabees, um, it just gives you that sense of belonging, a great sense of belonging, and you know, hey, I'm a Jew, right? And it actually now means something to me. Maybe not in a religious sense, but in an identity sense, it's really, really important. And I think it gives opportunity to people to find that. While ever Phil Filler's around and, and people like that, Maccabi will always be strong. Thank you.